Hello and welcome to the Canon XF300 video tutorial. In this tutorial, you will learn both the basic and advanced functions of the Canon XF300. On the table with me, you can see the Canon XF300 itself, a battery, and a compact flash card. Also included in your camera bag is a lav mic, which you will find in the most often times in the side pocket, a camera battery charger, and a 20-foot XLR cable also found in the side pocket. Now, even if you have all this equipment, you're going to need a few other things before you start recording. Number one is a tripod in order to steady your camera. Number two is a pair of headphones so that you can hear the audio that you're recording on your camera. On the back of this camera, you can see both the battery case and the CF card slots, of which there are two labeled A and B. So, what you would do is put your battery into the battery card slot, and make sure that this piece locks down on the battery, and close the lid, and then to open the CF card slot, you just pull and then let go, and it opens. Insert your CF card into the slot, and then you close this. Now that your battery and your CF card are inside the camera, you can now turn on the camera. The camera is operated by a green switch on the side labeled camera off and media. You'll want to turn this switch to the camera mode. This turns on the camera and then you'll want to pull out this view screen on the front. Oftentimes when a battery is pulled out the date and time will come up. You don't need to set these because they are rather insignificant to your actual filming. Now, let's move on to configuring the media. In order to configure the CF card to initialize, you're going to need to go into the menu of the camera. Looking at the view screen, you would press the menu button, which is right here. Then, you would use this select scroll wheel in order to scroll down on the LCD screen until you reach the other functions menu list. And once you reach this, you're going to press set to get into the menu. And then you're going to scroll all the way down to where it says initialize media. Then press set again. It'll ask you which card you want to configure. Since you have Compact Flash A installed, it will say CFA. You'll want to press set. It'll ask you if you want to initialize the card. It'll also tell you that it will erase all data on the card. If you have data on this card that you do not want to be deleted, I highly suggest you get the data off of the card before you initialize the card. As long as you don't have any important data on this card, use the select wheel to scroll to the OK option and then press set again. Process completed successfully, press OK and then press the menu tab again to get out of the menu. Your card is now initialized and you can begin recording. Now we're going to go over some basic functions of the camera. One of the most basic functions is the zoom function. The zoom function is controlled by two rocker switches. One rocker switch is on the side here and another is on top here. This switch is a lot more accessible because you put your hand through here 
and you automatically can have this switch. Now, the next thing to go over is focusing. Normally, the camera is on autofocus. Now, to figure out which focus you're which focus you're on, you'll have to look at the side of the camera. The focus switch is the one that says focus MA. And as you can see, this camera's focus is already set on auto. Sometimes you'll want to adjust the focus manually, to which then you'll set the focus to M for manual. For most situations, autofocus will be just fine. But for other advanced filming, you may want to use manual focus as well. Autofocus works automatically, obviously. So as you would zoom in and out on the rocker switches, it automatically focuses the camera for you, and you don't have to do anything. However, sometimes with uh, certain situations such as sports games, you're going to want to use the manual focus. All you have to do is set the focus to manual using the switch. Then, every time you zoom in, unless you use the ring here to adjust, it will be out of focus. This allows you a lot more versatility when filming certain sports games because you can, while you're zooming in and out, control what the focus is. Some of the more advanced functions of the XF300 include a setting called shutter speed. This controls how much light goes into the lens of the camera at any given time. The shutter speed switch is located on the bottom left of the camera marked shutter with settings marked off, on, and set. In order to change the shutter speed, you're going to have to turn it to on. Then you're going to have to pull the switch toward the set button and then release it. And on the LCD screen, you'll see a yellow box that marks how fast the shutter speed is. And as you pull the switch to the set position, you'll see both the lighting on the LCD screen and the setting in the orange box have changed. You can cycle through 1 by 30, A1 by 60, 1 by 60, all kinds of different shutter speeds for different kinds of situations. Besides the shutter speed, the ND filter also controls how much light is coming through the camera. The ND filter is located on the left side of the camera marked ND filter. Now, depending on the lighting conditions, you may want to turn the ND filter to 1, 2, or 3. Another setting that also influences how much light comes through the camera is auto white balance, which is labeled AWB on the left side of the camera. Depending on if you turn this function on or off, it influences how much white light will be in your footage. In some cases, the auto white balance may not be the level of control you're looking for. If you want even more control, you can go even deeper into a preset white balance. The XF300 comes with white balances named Daylight, Tungsten, and Kelvin, all three of them for different conditions depending on where you're shooting. Now, in order to get into this mode, you're going to have to turn the auto white balance to off, and then you're going to have to go into the camera menu just like you did with the card initialization, except this time you're going to a different menu. From the beginning of the menu, go into the white balance submenu. It should be set to daylight, but it might also be set to any of the other ones as well. From here you can select daylight, tungsten, or kelvin. The next important thing that we're going to go through is audio. Depending on how good or bad your audio might be, the camera footage that you take may very well be ruined. 
So it's important to have a good audio and make sure that your settings are configured correctly. There will be a few settings that you're going to have to configure first. Number one is the buttons on top of the two mic cable connections that you'll see here. These buttons control which external and internal microphones the channels go to. You're going to want to have channel number one go to external and channel number two go to internal. Plus, on the front of the camera, you'll see even more settings down here. You're going to have to make sure that channel one is set to mic 48 volts and channel two is set to just regular mic. Now what you would do after you've set those things is to plug your external microphone that comes in your camera bag into channel number one slot. Make sure that you do not disable the internal camera microphone because if your external microphone fails you will still have a backup and won't have to pr hopefully will not have to redo the entire shot. After you have configured all the settings the way that you want them, you're finally ready to start recording. There are two start and stop recording buttons on the XF300. One of them is located here. One of them is located here, near the handhold that you also hit the rocker switch with. And another one is also located on the top of the camera here. After you've recorded a clip, it's a good idea to go to the media setting of the camera and check to see that the take that you have just recorded is good quality. To do that, you would need to turn the camera switch to the media setting. This switches the camera from the camera mode to media mode, which you're then able to view any of the clips you've recorded on your CF card that you currently have inserted. This concludes the Canon XF300 tutorial. If you still have any questions, don't be afraid to ask. Also, consult your operations manual and rewatch this video a few times. 